What's up guys, this is Frenzy. Welcome back to another episode of Viewer Castles. Today we're going to jump into Tree Fingers Castle, uh, Castle Level 24. And uh, he sent me a challenge a couple of days ago. I'm still trying to get caught up from when Open House hit, so I'm still a little bit backed up. But I'm, I'm getting through them slowly. Alright, so what do we have here? Alright, so just a couple fake snotters. They're pretty obviously fake snotters. This one is probably the least obvious because there's a bunch of mines and I can't really see what's coming, but... It would almost be better if you connected these two snotters together. If you're going for fakes, I actually think that would be probably better, because it looks like you're pulling towards something in that, in that like, certain area, you know what I mean? Like, if I kill this snotter and I don't see anything for a second, the aggro circle only reaches to this point. So I know that nothing else is coming. But if you had another snotter who's at the edge of this aggro circle and he starts running towards me too, then I'm almost sure sure that I'd like that's like pulling something off screen, right? So I think that would be better for a fake. Um, this is obviously pretty standard though, the Sarah Master pull. All right, this is gonna pull through the wall down here. Um, the mouse trap I'm a little indifferent about. I'll take a look at like what mobs are coming though, but I'm guessing it's probably just gonna be a Scorpio because that's the that's the norm. Hungerbot and Scorpio, okay. So even the Hungerbot and Scorpio is kind of weird. I would almost prefer just having support uh, rather than the Hungerbot. Not terrible though. I understand you want like an extra ability to pull someone into the mouse wheel and into another group. Now I'll tell you a little bit... Does this actually pull this group? Yeah, okay. I'll tell you a little bit ab about why I don't really like the mouse trap in a second. Uh, whenever I can get to this corner here. Oh, that actually did so much damage. Must have crit me. Let's see what's coming here. Um, I can probably do this without potting. Oh, maybe not. Nope, I can't, I can't, I can't. <laughs> I thought that guy was on smash, but he was on charge. Alright. Um, the reason why I don't like this is if I aggro this group and this group, and I stand right here, um, I can make everything just, like, get stuck on the first Scorpio. Or whatever the first fat unit is that comes up to this point, I can just sit here, and that'll be the only unit that can attack me. And the rest of it'll just sit back here and get stuck. So you really need some sort of a trap that's going to punish someone for abusing this corner if they pull two groups. It makes things a little bit too easy for the attacker by being able to abuse that corner right there. I do understand what you're going for, though. If you get a pull, and then you get pull into the... Mouse wheel, that's a possibility of throwing them into the third group, which is like a triple pull, which is pretty good. But probably not as impossible as you might think at, uh, at killing someone, you know? It's, it's pretty easy to get out of three groups if you can get off volleys and stuff like that. Knights I probably have a little bit harder a time if they don't take big area of effect. A lot of knights rely just on their like base cleave for their area of effect. Alright, so I think you had this setup where it goes around in a circle, and then the Scorpio comes up behind these guys, which gives like a double pull kind of effect. I do like those type of rooms. I'm seeing them more and more. Um, actually, almost only out of viewer castles as well, because I did do an episode where someone did it, and it seems like probably my viewers watched it and said, oh yeah, that's a really good idea, and I did as well. I thought it was pretty good. Um, I haven't incorporated it in myself because, you know, I have a lot of ideas myself that I'm using, but it's a good it's a good way of using this room. I have, I hardly ever see this room anymore, but it might, you know, come back as more and more people start to figure out that you can do that. It's a pretty good idea. Alright, so this kind of almost feels like a fake to me because I don't see anything else coming, so I'm going to just kind of go... I don't think this one is though, yeah. So I really don't want to die, I don't want to get pulled. Okay, now I don't care as much. I just want to make sure that your castle is going over this way. Just so I know that that Zeke isn't skippable. So let's just take a really quick look. Okay, good. Alright, now the Zeke itself, here's your problem, okay? I'm not sure which one you want to be bodyguarded, 
but if it is the puppeteer, then you should have the puppeteer leading the squad. Because right now with the Zeke leading the squad and the fact that this guy is not defending the Zeke, I can just walk up here, headshot, and he's dead. And then there's no there's no danger here at all. Um, now, saying that, I do prefer that the Defendatron be on the Zeke, and you may have just made a mistake not thinking that the Defendatron would go to the puppet, Puppeteer instead. So uh, you'll want to look at that, you know, just move the Puppeteer a little bit farther away or move the Zeke, you know, a little bit closer and the Defendatron a little bit closer. All right, I hear Stairmasters. We're going to drop a volley because it's a really good volley spot. Another thing, I'm not sure if I've said it, but I don't really like... Uh, when you're pulling around walls, I don't like using low kind of trash mobby units. I only like elites because they're extremely valuable like that, you know. We make up words on this little series all the time, alright? Valuable, it's a new word. Look it up. It's gonna be in the dictionary next week. <laughs> but yeah, I don't, I don't like that only because of the fact that when I'm seeing them coming around, it's so easy for me to just volley it. Even if I pull two groups, I don't care because most of these other mobs are going to be dead by the time the volley's over. Um, that being said, this throws you into another... See, I would almost prefer that you have this Scorpio that's here, and it can pull you into this. Um, let's see exactly how this is set up. I, I almost prefer... If you look at my most recent castle... Um, the one that I'm editing right now, I have it over a little bit because it's a, hard, it's a little bit more under the skill bar when it's over a little bit, and it threads this wall a little easier as well. So it's kind of more straight on where the hero's movement would be. Um, so I'd almost prefer your trap to be over one, one or two hexes, your scorpion to be down here, and then you can put your stairmasters as the group that it's being thrown into, and you can have your scorpio be pulled through the wall. I would prefer that, I think. Um, this being said, your puppeteer in this group is a little bit too out in the open. He's very easy to kill. Put him back a little farther, you know, up in here or something. But, I mean, that's saying if you don't change it to Stairmaster down here. If you leave it as is, your, your, your puppeteer is a little out in the open. Alright. Continuing on. Alright, so I mean, this is a fine position for a mutton, especially because you have so many little traps around that kind of take up space. I like that pretty pretty good. And then you have two muttons? What's behind it? Scorpio. Okay. Well, I'm going to try to just kill one of the muttons right here. Looks like I'm not going to quite get it, but one more headshot. Volley away, or roll away, I mean. Alright, and now I should be fine fighting one Scorpio. Um, but this is a good boss room, I've seen it before. It's pretty hard for people to deal with. You know, I have really good gear, so I'm able to take down the muttons really quickly. Uh, for people who have less gear, it's more important to focus the Scorpio and then one mutton at a time, I think. That way you don't have so much to deal with at once. Because the muttons don't do terrible terrible amount of, amounts of damage, uh, just as their basic single attack without being enraged. Pretty good castle overall, though. We will jump into number two in just a second. Alright, for number two we have Darky ND, castle level 18. Jump into it on my knight. Alright, so I don't really like the Jimbo specialization like this. You're only one level over me. He did it. He hit me for a crit at 300. I mean, this doesn't really scare me all that much, you know? Maybe he'll be a little bit better on different specializations after the potions go through, but I mean, even with Enrage, like, this is not really a scary amount of damage. And even if I just run around in a circle, he can't even hit me. I mean, it's not really the best specialization ever. Whereas if he has a bigger swing, it's a little bit more scary, but, you know. Jimbos get a lot better at level 26, we'll just say that. Use them kind of just... I wouldn't use them as like a main unit, I would use them more as a unit that you um, you use to increase variety in your castle. I wouldn't put it in and be like, this Jimbo's gonna kill people. 
If you don't take care of the puppeteer, it might be a little bit better, but it's pretty easy to kill off the puppeteer as long as you pay attention to what's happening. Alright, this is a reasonably good group. And then you even have a puppeteer that comes in afterwards, I like that. Um, if you could get this like one hex up, it would protect your corner here. Because right now it's hitting the side of the wall, if I stand here. So you kind of want to protect that corner, probably. Alright, that doesn't pull anything, I don't think. Another decent time-wasting group. I should probably put a couple of these in my castle, to be honest. I don't think my castle wastes quite enough time at this point. But I really like dealing damage. I'm probably going to keep it as is until patch 17 comes through and then really try to get a good castle for patch 17. Especially if they do a good job with potions. Like, it's pretty easy for them to allow too many of them or nerf it too hard or something like that. But if they get a really good... Uh, if they did their research and did their work... It could be a really good patch. And with the amount- oh, this is good. With the amount people have been complaining recently... ...about, like, the design and overall path of the game, um, I feel like they, they know that they need a good patch, you know? Okay, I don't know what's going on right here, but I might die if I don't pay attention. Because that guy is super enraged. Kill off that Zeke. Alright. So, this was interesting. I like the delay on your... Your, uh... Your hunger bot here. It's, it's definitely an interesting room. The thing is, I mean, you already have it pulling through the wall. So... Hmm... You almost are already... You're trying to force the double pull almost too much. Like, you're trying to force the fact that they you want them to pull two groups. I would say a little bit too much with this trap. Because, I mean, you're already pulling through the wall. The whole benefit of pulling through the wall is to making them make, make a choice between wasting time for you or pulling two groups and making it a little bit harder on themselves. Um, adding in the trap is just kind of like... It's not bad. I mean, I like, I like how you set up the trap. I just think that... It would work better... I don't know. Mm. I mean, it's not bad. I I don't know. I don't want to critique it too much because it's something new that I haven't seen really all that much. And it did it ju it did its job. I just don't know if you're, you're trying to force it a little bit too much by pulling through the wall and having that, you know, springboard. But... Alright. If for some reason I pulled that Robo Shieldatron, that would have been ridiculous. Robo Shieldatron guarding a Pete Poundmore? Oh my god. He would have never died. But, um, as it is, Pete Poundmore, he seems a little bit weaker these days. But he's not bad, I guess. And then another good time wasting group. Like I've said previously, I, ha I had this room in one of my castles. Uh, my previous castles here, like my last castle that I was using, and it just doesn't take enough time to get through the room itself. So I switched it out for something different. Just get that stupid Scorpio off of the trap. The trap here I think is fine. You know, it's just like an added benefit if they get hit by it, but it doesn't really matter if they do or not. And then that throws you into the boss room, which is... So, I mean, you notice there, uh, I pulled the Zeke as, like, my initiation, basically. And that made it so that he didn't get his howl off on him. I could have probably, if I noticed that there was a, a Mittens there, that hurt. He hit with all three arrows. Um, 
I could have probably pulled the mittens, and then he might not have howled either one of them, because howl is kind of bugged where if you hit, if you open it with a lashing flames, it'll howl where he's being pulled to, not where he currently is. I'm not sure if it's a bug or how it's intended, but that's how it is at the moment. Uh, so yeah, pretty good castle. We'll jump into number three in just a second. Okay, and lastly we have Ethan HD, castle level 23. Jump into it. Spike Trap is kind of an interesting touch to this. A lot of people don't really use this. It's good for denying vision, though. You noticed I had to get right up next to the spotter, and the hook was in the air as I was rolling, so I kind of had, like, a, a split second where, you know, maybe if I didn't react sooner, I could have gotten hooked by that. This feels like maybe another one, but I don't really want to go back over that. Okay. This feels like it might be a little bit too far away. Um, this, this trap here, I feel like moving it up one square might be a little bit better because you noticed I was kind of hanging out like way back here where I aggroed it and I didn't run back or anything but he still had to move up just like on the tip of the trap where I don't think if I, like if I got hooked I don't think I would have sprung the trap the way you wanted me to. So I think if you move it up just one hex if you can, I don't know if that'll interfere with this trap, but if it won't and you can move it up one hex that would probably be best. Other than that, if it does hit it should kill the person, so it's set up pretty well in that regard. That's two different mob groups it looks like. Now it's not too bad. Alright, so I accidentally hit two mob groups. We'll go with the side that I aggro to see if you have this room set up so that uh so that it's not skippable. Okay, so you have another group over here, and this is already what? You have one okay, so yeah, the entire group is this this whole side of the the uh, castle here is skippable. Or the room I mean. So you can pick a side that you want to skip. I see a lot of people that have their I think I did a double pull again. That's alright. I see a lot of people who set up that room like that, and then I see a few people who set it up so that it's not skippable. And it is possible to do. And I really prefer when people use it that way. Um, I don't really think you can use elites when you do it. You might be able to. But, you know, I, I've explained it a couple of times where you can link one of these sides. You basically have this one linked to the front. Everybody does that. And then you link one of them to the bottom, usually this side, to the bottom here. And then your next room has to be a specific set of rooms where the walls are connected to, like, this. There's something over here, which is a room, and you can connect it through with a snotter through this wall. So that this side is connected into the next room. This, this side up here is connected to the bottom of this room, and then this one's connected to the top. And I think the uh, linear corridor... The one with three rooms, I think that's one of them that can be used. I know there's a couple of them, I think, but yeah. Alright, Pete Poundmore with a dampener. It's an okay combo. Probably better against knights because they have to be up in the Pete Poundmore space to do damage. That's set up pretty well because you have basically the uh, you have like a two-part combo where if this guy pushes you and I'm standing here, if this guy pushes me, I go into the Pete Palmer. If this guy pulls me, I get pulled into the Pete Palmer. So you have kind of two chances to aggro two groups. I like that. That's good.
And I'm not sure if there's any way that you can speed up your Zeke at all, or... I hate saying delay Cyclopses, like... Uh, mine's set up like this as well, where I'm, I think I'm only getting one shot from my Zeke. But basically you get stunned, and then the Zeke only fires one of his shots, and then you get unstunned and you can get out of it. Um, I feel like the only way to do it would be to move the Cyclops so he's turned a certain way, and then the Zeke starts lining up his shot, and then the Cyclops stuns you. The problem with that is if you stun the person the wrong way, it'll probably knock them out of the shot, so... Um, maybe it's just gonna be like that 100% of the time. But I'm not sure if there's any way to kind of fix it. Alright, so the double Jimbo with a Scorpio is kind of interesting. If you do get hit by two Jimbos, especially when they get to level 26, you will die instantly, I think at any level. That being said, it is pretty easy to keep away from two Jimbos when, like, this is the room. Um... I mean, maybe you could add some space control elements to this, some rotating cannons or some mouse traps or something like that instead of the silence might be better, you know, on the sides, just to keep some space control elements in here so that I don't have as much room to work with. Overall, I think it's like a, it's a, it's an okay boss room, but I think it might be a little bit easy on the easy side compared to maybe like two muttons in a Scorpio or something like that, you know. But not too bad. Um, this is number three, so we're going to end the video here. If you guys enjoy what I do, please subscribe. Uh, if you want to be a part of viewer castles, you can email me at Frenzy Castle Runs. You can also comment on my castle or comment on my uh, videos. Leave your in-game name, summoner level, and castle level is appreciated as well. Um, you can also create a challenge if you're lower level and you want to you know, move my level down more towards what yours is. Uh, you can create a challenge and do that. Leave the timer at one week so that I have time to actually get to it. And yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you next time.